three years, Grant. Will the 49ers be better if they draft Lance, Fields, or Jones? Of or these of these three, I really feel like Lance is the one who has a legit shot to be great. Uh, I don't think Jones does. I think his athletic limitations, he could be the next Drew Brees. I don't think he will be. Uh, Fields, I question his decision-making. It seems like he just there's a hesitation in his game. He holds the ball a long time under pressure. He could be very mm-hmm. good, but I don't know if he's going to be great. And Lance, I mean, Lance could be a straight-up bust. Lance could be a tight end three years from now. But all the reports about him seem like he has like a ton of traits you can't coach. He's very young. Um, if the Niners take him, I think that it's a possibility they have a Super Bowl in three years. If they take Jones, I think it's likely that everyone will be fired. And with Fields, you know, they could be kind of in the middle, like competing, but not quite get, kind of where they are with Jimmy. Mm, Vish. I don't know. Yeah, so I'll give an individual of what I think they would be. So if they take Jones, I think that Jones is going to have these uh, manufactured stats so yeah. throughout, and he's going to be this kind of good player, but I think there's always going to be this uh, looming question mark. And I, I wonder if that, if maybe they make the nine, because the thing with Jones is I think that the Niners are going to have to be a little more perfect with uh, continually stacking their team um, while he's on the rookie contract. I don't think there's going to be room to really miss on signings and stuff, because I think that Jones development track is going to take, two or three years in terms of just getting him to the point where he can be a Drew Brees or a Phillip Rivers type. I think it's going to take at least 48 or 51, three years, 51 games of reps of him starting 51 games. Cause I think mm. 50 games is kind of the mark where those guys really yeah. started to make uh, changes in their career. Even Peyton Manning, who, and even Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning, yeah. and Andrew Luck, two smartest quarterbacks to ever come out. They were turnover machines early in their careers. Interesting. And they weren't in games. as good. That's right. an interesting they number. In, if you think about Jimmy, sorry, keep going. Yeah, they weren't in as good offenses as Kyle, so there's so Max stats will be way better because they will be more manufactured. But I think there will be some growing pains. So with Lance, I, I actually think that with Lance, like you, I I agree. Lance's ceiling is limitless. Like the talent mm-hmm. here is special, but mm-hmm. the thing with Lance that worries me is I don't know if the Niners are going to be patient with him. Mm. I don't know if they're the kind of team where I think that with Lance, it just feels like it could be one of those things where he might eventually get there and he might be amazing. I don't know if Kyle Shanahan's the type of guy where I read him and he's going to be like, okay, Trey Lance, we're going to go through this process with you. We're going to go through these growing pains. Cause to me, the way I read him on the sideline is just a guy that's sick and tired. He thinks he's ready to win a Super Bowl, and he's sick and tired of Jimmy Garoppolo getting hurt or ruining it for him. So I don't know if he's ready to go through that, but I agree with you in terms of ceiling Lance is like very, very high ceiling. And like you said, there's a lot of really intriguing traits with Trey Lance, like how smart he is, his arm strength, his running ability, all these things. Yeah. All these drive. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. And then with Justin Fields. So the way I read it with Justin Fields, and I do want to add one more tidbit because I was listening to Greg Cosell on Rich Eisen podcast and this was the last time he went on with rich eisen and basically throughout this process cosell has been a little lower on justin fields and he told rich eisen he's like since the last time we spoke justin fields has grown on me tremendously i feel like there are still flaws but i feel like the ability to throw and the ability to throw down the field is so elite in terms of his trades i feel like this is kind of how i was looking at justin herbert and I was like, well, you, he has this one special ability to throw and throw down the field where, yeah, there's some things, but if you can make things clear and defined, like this could be a real star. And he's really grown on me throughout this process. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where I'm at with Justin Fields. Like, I understand, Grant, when you say there is a slight hesitation in his game and all of that. I think in this particular offense, that hesitation gets removed. I think if you go to another offense where things like his Ohio State offense are more, Justin, it's not if you see this coverage, you throw the ball here. It's you have to progress through this and you have to see this and see that. It's because that's what the Niners offense, in, if you dumb it, dumb it down, right, in, in truth, their pass game is a lot of Kyle Shanahan has tendency that you're going to get quarters, right? The – um. Emmanuel Sanders missed. They ran the Mills concept, a dig in a post, quarters coverage from the uh-huh. Chiefs. How did they know to get run a dig in the post versus quarters? Because they knew they were going to be in quarters. They got Sanders wide open, quarterback missed the throw. So when you do something like that for him, I, I think that he could be meant really successful. 
but overall, I'm kind of with you in terms of trajectory and success. I think Lance and Fields are the two guys that can really, really be there if everything mm-hmm. works right. And I think Jones, it'll it'll just take more time to be there. But I've, I'm I like Mac Jones. Blake, go ahead. My bad. I've been quite long. You're I don't here. like as much as Kyle Trask, but yeah, can go. On. <laughs> so maybe Trask in the conversation. Just kidding. Yeah. Um, Trask at three. So, so I just don't think Trey Lance really fits the 49ers timeline. I wish, I think you kind of said it best. Like, will they be patient with them? Because the fans just saw you got the fans and you guys, you saw the team make a championship in 2019. You know, the 2010s maybe were a little rougher besides a couple of years where you guys were super dominant, but is the team ready to wait a year or two for a quarterback who doesn't have the most experience? and wait for them and walk them through the process, maybe go through a couple down years. And I don't think so, because if they, if you guys have a losing record the next two years, will Shanahan still be there? I mean, he'd be, he'd have one winning season in what, six years, no matter how good you may think he could be and, or don't think he is like, that's really not good for any quarterback or any coach. Um, so I just don't think Lance really fits the timeline in that sense. Uh, but yeah, as you, again, you you had something, Grant. I just feel like that, that's that, there's a good point there, but at the same time, like if you're trading up to three for a quarterback, you shouldn't be drafting based on who fits your system best or or who's most pro ready. Like the only question is who's going to have the best career, who's going to be the best three four years from now, and that's the guy you want to take. And if it takes a little time to get him there, it's worth it. If he ends up being great, so I, they just got to figure that out. So I, I think there's two ways to look at it, right? That's one way to look at it. I think the other way to look at it is who's the best player. And I think that the I personally would argue that of these three, Justin Fields is the best player. But I've seen right genuine arguments. Yes, right now. Right now. I've okay. seen good arguments laid out for the fact that Mac Jones is the best player of these three right now. And that's where I look at Kyle yeah. Shanahan and he say, I'm going to take the best player available. Like, I don't have time to sit here and figure out what Justin Fields could be Pistol. or Trey Lance could be mm. in terms of quarterback. Come on, <laughs> man, come on. Okay, okay, okay. I'm saying they're <laughs> available. I'm saying. We, uh, okay. No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. He's the best player yeah. in this draft. But, yeah, yeah. You, you you see what I mean, right? I, I think that's where it, it's tough not to read what he's looking at. Yep. yep. Interesting, yeah. And that was my other thing, too, is, like, Mac Jones might be the most ready, um, like, I know a lot of people mentioned processing is what Mac Jones is like super elite at and maybe doesn't have the arm strength as these other guys. So maybe that like that, that fit right there. But as Grant said, you know, you just take the best guy. And I think for me, I think fields would be the best guy um, at three. And if he was, if he does turn out to be as good as I think he can be and will be, I think there'll be a team that consistently makes the divisional round um nfc championship game like that type level team making the super bowl is super hard and i i mean it's impossible to predict even two years from now um but yeah i think they'll definitely be a contender um with fields kyle made that little comment about you know any year that you don't have a top five quarterback it's a tough year Uh uh-huh exactly and you cannot tell me that you ever think mac john is going to be a top five quarterback in the nfl you may feel he's a good fit for your offense but he's never he's not going to be a top five quarterback in the nfl i he's i think i, I feel pretty confident to say that and so mm-hmm. if you trade it up to number three to take some guy that you feel is going to top out at like 12th best in the league why did you do it why did you do that it's baffling no, you're right you're right and it's just baffling. because think about it think about it even if he becomes the best he's going to be like i don't even know if a, like prime drew Brees. most people on years it was because everybody in Drew Brees is prime. It was Manning, Rodgers, Brady. Everybody agrees those guys were in the top five. This was four at best. Yeah. The, the, the other two were always recycled. Some years it was Ben and Breeze. Some years True. it was Breeze and Rivers. Some years it True. was Ben and Rivers. Some years it True. was Ben and um, Matt Ryan. Some years it was Stafford. Like Palmer. Yeah. Some years yeah. it was Stafford. So there's been yeah. a – Russell Wilson then came along. Andrew yeah. Luck. So there's been yeah. a lot of guys that have been recycled with those three. Those were the three constants. And when I look at this era, to me, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and Deshaun Watson are the three constants of this era. And then that's – the question becomes, can Mac Jones become one of the other two? And I have questions about that. But then I yeah. have questions, honestly, if Justin Fields and Trey Lance – I course. love Justin Fields. If either of them could be the other two, which is Agreed. why when you make that statement and then you trade up to get – 
the third quarterback in a draft. It just I I, I kind of like Little right. Bit. The only Little the bit. only reason we 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 like it and we defend it is because we want Kyle Shanahan to be aggressive and go get his guy, and he's done that. But when and we think highly of Kyle at this point. We still right. think highly of Kyle. We respect him. Yeah. But yeah. when you analyze it from a logical standpoint, it's like, man, like, can there be a third guy in this draft with that capability? Or wait, are the Jets and Jaguars just stupid because they're missing out of the one guy in this draft with that capability? It, it's hard. Hard. Yeah. Yep. 